gentlemen, my name is Coaster Chow, Doncaster born, but built for theme parks, and welcome to this theme park Coaster Chow vlog. Today we're here for the opening weekend of Alton Towns Resort, the second day of operation this season. Great to get into the park today, it'll be really great to experience everything. Obviously we've got some new attractions in Sea Beauty's Land that hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll review today. We've also got Wicker Man, we've got Nemesis, I don't know if one, hopefully next year. Uh, we've also got Galactica turning 20 years old, we've got the original Haunted House turning 30, Jewel nearly turning 20 years old in the year's time. So we've got a lot of stuff to check out today, it'll be a brilliant day. Let's get on park and let's see everything Alton Towns Resort has to offer for 2022. So one of the first big changes to Alton Towers Resort, as I mentioned in the Final Touches news update, is this new permanent fencing, which is nice. So, before the opening day of the season on yesterday, they, they were all painted brown. Now it's all a nice purple colour, which is, it's got a nice feel to it, nice purple Alton Towers feel to it, like a purple or navy blue or something like that, so that's pretty cool. We've got these nicely themed bins as well, so that's pretty cool going across got the other side there so obviously this used to be the freak show scare zone a few years back at Scarefest. we had like the universal halloween horror night style scare zone uh set up obviously there's smaller in the background in through the trees hydration station and a cash machine so let's head down to smile that's going to be the first ride of the day and hopefully fingers crossed smile will be running well because uh, um sort of closed towards the back end of last year due to extended maintenance so let's see if it's got better than last time to be fair smile was a big surprise last year last season because usually on a certain seat it wasn't running so well it was quite rough but it was actually not too bad last year so let's go on smile let's see if it's got even better so we have entered the queue for our first round of the day the smiler First time Infinity Roller Coaster opened back in 2013. Next year it will be 10 years old. Still can't believe it's 10 years old, you know. Next year it will be 10 years old. It's wicked. So going through the queue line now, what I noticed right at the start of the entrance was permanent queuing right up until the sort of main queue where you should go in. So they've opened the extended queue line, which never really opened last year, so that's good news. There is the beast himself. Beautiful. Let's get on the smiler. Now obviously with the Smiler there was a lot of things that we were sort of speculating about when it was just known as Secret Weapon 7 in 2012. There was a lot of things that we sort of didn't know about it, we didn't know what it was going to do, didn't know who the manufacturer was going to be. There was a lot of question marks at the time. And then we had obviously the Scare Maze, the Sanctuary. Whee! We had the Sanctuary Scare Maze as well, so that sort of answered yeah. quite a lot of questions. So, uh, yeah, I think a lot of questions were asked when the Sanctuary was brought in for Scarefest in 2012. And we got more questions asked during the winter of 2013 when the Smile was first announced. And it's been fully really people ever since, so let's, uh, let's get on the Smiler. Obviously a marmalising attraction in 2013 when it opened, and still marmalising people to this day. So let's get on the Smiler. train service now operations wise that's very good by Alton Towers to put on a free train service um, knowing how busy the weekend usually gets it's always nice to get your coast on a nice you know train service more than one train two or three if you can um, so it's nice to see smile on a free train service today so uh, just looked at the apps to give you guys a bit of a queue update it said 90 minutes so uh, I'm sort of halfway through that 90 minutes now so I've probably got about half an hour or so to go um, Literally, all we've got is I've got to get in front of me there, and then if I just give you guys a little peep over the top, so you've got all that to go, as well as the inside bit. So, yes, yeah, so I've got all that behind me, and then all that behind me there. So, uh, 
yeah, I'd say about half an hour or so to go in the queue. So uh, let's keep going. Smiles on 90 minutes. We'll see if that improves throughout the day. And uh, let's keep going through the queue line. section of the smile we're not too far away from getting inside and I can show you guys some bits of the station um, but I thought while we're here I thought I'd give you a fun fact about the year this opened and the manufacturer now Gerslauer or just Laura however you want to pronounce it is the manufacturer of the smiler now in 2013 when Smiler opened, they opened three other roller coasters. Ratta Mueller, a bobsled coaster at Family Park, Abyss, a custom Eurofighter at Adventure World, and they also opened a trip drill Caracho, another custom infinity coaster, as well as the Smiler. So you have the Smiler, Abyss, Caracho and Ratta Mueller all opening in 2013. So Gerstler overall in 2013 opened four roller coasters. Two Infinities, one Eurofighter, and one Bobsled Coaster. So let's get into the inside queue of the Smiler, and let me show you guys inside the inside queue line. So I've been queued for the Smiler now for about an hour, about an hour or so. Um, by the time I get off, it'll probably be about an hour and a half, so I'll be queued for the full 90 minutes. Uh, as you can see, the screen behind me. Hashtag eyeball. Um, so, queue for about an hour and a half by the time I get off, so um, yeah, the full 90 minutes to turn on the app. So, yeah, it said zero when I went to the queue, and then it turned into an hour and a half when I checked off my round. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what the situation is for the future. But, um, but yeah, like I said, I'm really excited to, put, to get on the first round of the season at Hawks Hours. Uh, like I say, it's a, um, you know, been at the car for nearly 10 years, so we'll just see what happens. So, let's get inside the smile. Look at that. One thing about the indoor queue that never ceases to amaze me is the sort of projections on the wall. Really nice projections, they've been going for nearly 10 years, so it's nice to see the projections properly maintained, etc. But yes, also what I've seen yesterday, for the first time since 2017, the baggage hold on Smiler and 13 is back. So I don't think I'll be able to film in the station for you guys now. But I will see you guys after the ride. So just come on for the first round of the day on the Smiler. Like I say, it's nearly 10 years old. And the smoothness has definitely improved on that ride. I think, especially on the back row, I was sat right on the back row in the middle of the back row. So that was usually one of my roughest seats in the past. It's definitely got smoother. The last sort of tough little twist at the end sort of banged on the shoulders a little bit. But overall, definitely improved from last season. Out of 10, I'll probably improve from a 7 to a 7.5. Like I said, the smoothness has definitely improved. The inversions, you're going to need transition from inversion to inversion. It's definitely improved on the atmosphere of the ride, the whole anticipation of the ride. Overall, very marvelous attraction. Let's go on to the next ride. So we're about to enter, as you can hear already, the second area of the day. The Dark Forest, 13 and Rita. Just walk by Hex and it's closed, which is a shame. But some people said in the comment section of my preview, that it was closed yesterday as well, so 50-50 doesn't surprise me, does surprise me. So, oh well, X closed for the day, as Skyride. 
And there is Rita. Coming to the station. So yeah, I'll probably have a 13 or Rita first, one of the two. Let's go experience the dark forest. So we are on the sky ride, of course, the cable car system here at the Tower Resort. Uh, Phil and Smiler, 90 minute queue. Um, re uh, 13's closed, Rapids is closed, uh, 13's, uh, like I said, it's closed, Rita's on 70 minutes, Wickham's on 100 minutes, so uh, obviously not great queue times, multiple rides closed, uh, not a great start to the day, Hex is closed, so uh, not a fantastic start to the day. Uh, but Smiler was still good, it was but still running better than uh, previous season, which I've already said before. Um, hopefully we try and get some more rides up in Forbidden Valley, try and get Nemesis, that's because Q's are full capacity, so we'll see what that's like when we get down there. Uh, Funk and Fly from the Retro Squad, we'll see what that's on. Um, and uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll improve towards the end of the day, so uh, let's keep going. Towards the beast, which is 1994, on the verge of a major refurbishment in the next couple of years. So it's one of our final times getting on the original Nemesis. Obviously, it looks, looks nice and painted up at the moment, but of course, in a couple of years' time, we're going to get that new major refurbishment. Specific safety announcement. Please follow those instructions may result in your ejection from the resort. Thank you for your cooperation. Let's get on the major nemesis. I've zoomed in extra close because you can see you've got the, nemesis, the back of Nemesis of Terra. Looks all clear to me. And there's the beast. So yeah, you just saw a bit of a zoomed in shot earlier of the back of Nemesis of Terra. Um, we're going to try and get a close look at the front of Nemesis of Terra after the ride on Nemesis, but obviously Sub Terra has been the major part of speculation um, to what's happening with it. We don't know if it's reopening, we don't know if it's becoming a scare major scare fest this year. We don't know. But uh, overall, not too bad. Um, Something I've just noticed, a certain Nemi is stuck on its hinges. <laughs> so that's quite fun. I bet those people are having a lot of fun. I'll update you with the situation as we get it. Give you guys another angle of the Nemesis of Terra Building. So behind it. So that's 
it's off the side angle, it's down to some terrace side. Obviously, questions about whether that's going to be open next year or not. That's why it's in. Nemesis first opened back in 1994. Now this coaster is a Bolger and Mavalad inverted roller course. Now this came about because of John Wardley riding the prototype over a Six Flags, Batman the Ride of course. And since then Nemesis has grown on to create generations of fans for this roller coaster. Now obviously in the next couple of years we're expecting a major refurbishment for this roller coaster which includes a complete retrack and new support from the latest double. And um, yeah, that's been coming in the next couple of years. So this could be one of the final times during the season, um, whether it's just this trip or multiple trips throughout the year, fingers crossed, that we'll get to ride the original beast before its major refurbishment. So let's go on the iconic roller coaster for one of its final rides during the 2022 season. I look forward to the refurbishment in a couple of years' time. It's happened again, it's happened again, Nemesis, it's happened again. So this is the back of the Nemesis station. I've always said this bit has been nicely painted up. You see the level of detail in the structure. Just point back a bit, there we go. You can see the level of detail in the structure. So let's go for a ride on Nemesis. One eternity later. See these on the creatures? They've been waiting for Nemesis of Terror for about six years now, but the board awaited. in the final touches news update a couple of days ago. Well nearly a week ago actually. It's the new stairs. There's some new stuff around there just to improve accessibility which again sort of the first sort of processes towards its refurbishment. So though so that'll be one of the platforms I'm guessing where they'll be able to access the ride for its maintenance and its refurbishment. So the first steps are in place, ready to refurbish Nemesis. We're literally about to get inside, so let's get into the beast. The belly of the beast.
just had our ride on Nemesis, the B&M inverted coaster. Now, again, I think some of the inversions was quite bumpy, quite, you know, kind of violent on the shoulders, but apart from that, you can't beat the classic coaster back in 1994. It's still a great ride. The, uh, the airtime as you go through the inversion, again, phenomenal. It, nothing beats a classic coaster. And when it gets to refurbishment in a couple of years' time, I'm going to miss that classic roar on the lift hill. So, Nemesis, all-time great ride. Um, out of 10, I'll give it 8. I think it's still quite an iconic attraction, one of the most iconic attractions in the park. Um, like I said, I'm looking forward to seeing the photos in a couple of years' time and let's see what happens to the ride next. Ride of the park, we're probably going to go to Galactica next. Uh, try and do the Fulton and Flywheel River Burn Valley, then head over to Mutiny Bay, try Wicker Man, things like that, and we'll see what else is happening. So that's our nemesis. Let's go over to Space and Park Galactica. Here's the beast. And as you can see by this ginormous space portal, we're heading into Galactica. Now, this is the refurbishment of air which turns 20 years old this year in 2022. Um, the original air opened in 2002, Bottlegrove and Mabby are flying coaster on the former site of the new Beast, uh, which was a Schwarzkopf roller coaster. Um, so yeah, it's had an interesting history, this site. And then 2016 it was refurbished into Galactica. The queue is says to be 60 minutes, so that's pretty good. Travelling through space and time on Galactica. There's our test seat, and it is 60 minutes. So let's go through the main entrance. So the queue's just coming down there. Doesn't look 60 minutes. If it was 60 minutes, we'd be way back at the start. So might have actually improved since then. So we'll see. But uh, go through the queue. Usually, when Galactica first opened, they opened the extender queue for the old air, which you never used to do back when it first opened in 2002. So, that's pretty good. And it's still open, which is what we're going through now. So, yeah, Galactica, the refurbishment of air back six years ago now. I can't believe it was six years ago since Galactica first opened as the refurbishment of air. But, uh, Let's travel through space and time. So when I first opened in 2002, it had a five-year sponsorship from Cadbury Heroes, if you didn't already know. Um, now, AIR, uh, if you know what it stands for, Aerial Inversion Ride, and then this ride got refurbished in 2016 to Galactica, where it had virtual reality, and only a couple of years back, they took the virtual reality off because of the quality of the virtual reality. So um, the VR quality itself, I tried it with the VR, I tried it without the VR. For me, without the VR was better than with VR. The VR quality was a bit poor. Darren Brown's going straight VR was a lot better. Um, but yeah, to think that this had a sponsorship from Cadbury Heroes back in 2002, it's hard to think about. But um, this ride's gone through a lot of history over the last 20 years, and let's get it. So we've just come off our ride on Galactica, uh, the B&M flying coaster, and it's got smoother. I'm not going to lie to you guys, it got smoother. I think as a, as a big build for me, I think the cushioning restraint sort of helped with that. So it felt quite smooth for me. It sort of felt like a bit of a quite smooth transitions. Um, but overall, I think it's definitely improved the smoothness of the ride. I think the transitions are very good. The transitions from different inversions are quite flowy. They're not too stop style. They feel quite rough on the transitions, etc. Um, you can hear the people enjoying it already. Um, overall, Glatzka, really good ride. I think it's definitely improved from previous seasons. Out of 10, I think 7.5 is a decent rating. So I think next we'll hopefully try and get Wicker Man done, try and get the Dungeons done, Rita 13, and just see what else there is to do on Towers. But we've flown into space. I can say there is no, the moon is not made of cheese. I can tell you that for a fact, it's not made of cheese. Uh, but it was a great journey nonetheless. That's Glatzka. Let's move on. So this is the abandoned Nemesis of Terra. This is the entrance sign for it. Q line looks fresh, new. That's a sneaky peek inside. So you've got what would be the entrance into the first section of the ride, which was the lift section. This was the elevator section where you'd uh, get told to view the Nemesis in the Phalanx lab. This right here, was the exit to Subterra. So this way you would exit out of the decontamination maze section. 
This part, apart from that pile of leaves just ahead of you, um, this section, I think a bit of a clean up, and this would be all ready to go, this exit. Obviously, PA1X. So, sub tariff for me is an interesting one. In fact, I'm going to step on this rock and see if we can get a closer look. So, heading into there. Sort of see from a distance. Looks okay inside. Looks a little bit, a little bit iffy, a little bit jiffy. Um, they've still got the disabled entrance sign up here. This is the disabled entrance sign for Subterra. And this is where you would come up, up to here. Still got all that queuing around the back there. So it's still got a lot of stuff up from Subterra. And all the Project 42 theme has been completely taken out. So unless it's a brand new maze, I reckon it's the return of Subterra at some point in the future. Hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, I want to see Subterra return next season. But it's another guessing game to see whether that happens or not. Um, but yeah, this attraction was a great attraction. If you just notice there, if you notice up here, quarantine restricted area poster with the Subterra logo. So, comment down below whether that poster was up in Project 42 or whether that was still there from Subterra. But, it's going to be very interesting to see what this site is going to look like over the months, over the season. See if any construction work happens. Um, one thing you will notice from the past photos and things this past week is there was a huge fence with barrels. That has gone, and it's literally just one massive grey fence now. So, um, again, could be another step in the right direction for Subterra returning in the future, but we do not know at this stage. So, we'll be sure to keep our eyes on it here on Coast Channel YouTube channel. So, to go down to the forest, the dark forest, we decided to take the garden route. Nice plantery. And you've got the classic pagoda that I believe was refurbished not that long ago. So there's some nice garden shots there. It's always nice to respect the Alton Towers heritage. Nice building there. Let's head to the dark forest. We welcome back the Enchanterers to challenge and duel your tangled trees. Now, I'm only joking. We're back in Dark Forest again. See what the queue is like for 13 and Rita. Let's see what happens. So, I mean, the queue last time we checked, 13 was closed and Rita was on like 60 or 70 minutes. So, I mean, I really wouldn't mind what the queue was like. I think 13 is probably going to be on 60. No, my luck. <laughs> no, my luck. Um, what I do like, I don't know if I've done this just here or not, but the tree branch has been repainted on Rita. So that's quite nice. Uh, but yeah, let's go see what the queues are like. 20 minutes for Rita. So I thought, why in Lord of Coaster Jesus not? <laughs> why not? 20 minutes, why not? So, of course, this opened in 2005 as Rita, Queen of Speed, manufactured by Intamin. This is pretty much the Intamin forest, it's got two coasts all manufactured by Intamin. But yeah, queue for this is saying 20 minutes. I'll be the judge of that. So, yeah. Let's get on Rita. Basically, the entrance sign to Rita has been completely redone. I'll do another shot at the front when we get off the ride, but 
uh, you can see the, the vines. And I spoke to you guys earlier about the vines on the ride operation box, uh, where the station was. I saw a tr uh, one of the tree theming being painted up there. So we've got these trees behind, this little tree theming here behind this little entrance uh, thing to Rita. Uh, you've got the tree painted up at the station. So Rita's theme is definitely improved. They've definitely done some TLC on Rita's theming before the start of the season. But let's get on the Queen of Speed. The forest has taken over. So for those of you who need a little bit more facts on Rita and Queen of Speed and the history of the ride, basically this ride started off in the Ugland section of the park in 2005 where we're standing right now. So this used to be themes like prehistoric and dinosaurs and we had the iconic corkscrew just down there. Uh, corkscrew was removed at the end of 2008. Uh, 2009 it was just Rita. Uh, the Ugswing was removed as well. Ugswing was moved down to Clark Land, which is now the world Dave Williams uh, back in 2009 uh, as the Twilling Toadstool. And then uh, we had Rita in just Ugland alone and then we had SW6 happening in 2010, which is 13. Along with 13 came the retheme of Ugland into Dark Forest, which is what we see here today. And the Rita of Queen of Speed became just Rita. Uh, so basically the whole prehistoric theming went, the Thunder Rock Rally went, we've got trees, we've got darkness, we've got the forest taking over. Um, literally, as soon as 13 opened, we had the Dark Forest area with it as well. We had the whole opening ceremony with Jonathan Ross. Um, so yeah, Rita's had a, a rich, rich history. People have said for years it should be on the chopping block to go next in terms of the next Alton Towers coast to be removed from the park. Personally, I think it'll stay here for a good couple of years, good few years, yeah. Especially since they've done all this new uh, paint-ups and theming, etc. in the entrance. Uh, we've got the, um, the station box in the, uh, the box. Uh, on load, off load box in the station area as well, getting a bit of a paint up as well. So I think with a lot of stuff being done to Rita, I think that uh, it'll still be here for a good few years yet. So, um, you know, despite the rumours, despite people saying they might be on the chopping block, uh, I think Rita will be, uh, will still be here for a few years to come. So uh, that's a little bit of history on Rita, and now let's go and ride the Dark Forest Queen of Speed. So we are getting towards Rita's station. I believe it's on two trains. Could be wrong. 13's on 50 minutes, so probably, since I want to get Wicker Man done as well as Jewel on that, probably going to give 13 a miss today. With no single rider, so probably going to give 13 a miss today. So sorry, 13. But yeah, got Wicker Man to come, got Jewel to come. See about the new attractions, see what they're about, and that'll probably wrap up the day. So let's go on Rita. So we just had our ride on Rita, the Intamin Accelerator roller coaster. Not too bad. I think in previous years it's been quite rough, but this time again, something feels smooth about that coaster. Something feels uh, better about that coaster and the way it runs and operates. Uh, I think the twists and turns, the transitions were very nice. The launch gets a lot of force, especially depending on where you're sat in the ride. Overall. Queen of Speed deserves the title. Let's go through. I think we're going to go and do Wicker Man and Jewel before the end of the day. So let's go shoot some ghosts. So we are walking through the Haunted Hollow on the way to Jewel. Brand new light. Well, these brand new lights coming down this Haunted Hollow pathway. So yeah, we're on the way to Jewel. Yeah, like I said, I've got new lights down the Haunted Hollow pathway, which is nice. New bit of lighting going on. There's Skyride going up there. Got Wickham on either side, so we will on that soon. But let's, we're going to head, head down to Jewel, see if it's improved. And yeah, fingers crossed, Jewel has improved. So let's see what's going on. Dialect is a characteristic speech of a person's district. Accent can apply to a much broader area. I don't have much area to broaden. So we 
we are here at Jewel. Now, the original haunted house before it was transformed into Jewel in 2003 is celebrating 30 years. Now, of course, the haunted house first came with Gloomy Wood and Katanga Canyon just up there in 1992. Now, in 2003, the haunted house was completely transformed into Jewel. The haunted house strikes back with added guns to turn it into a shooting dart ride. So, we're going to see if there's been any improvements inside. Let's get inside Jewel and see what has changed for this season. So the good thing about Jewel is it's got some very interesting theming going on. So you've got these gravestones right here. Don't forget to view your photos. So you've got these nice gravestones. You've got this nice wooden archway under here. One thing I've always liked with Jewel is they use the, the walls and the things like that to its advantage. And it's literally just through here. There's the ancient sign. There's the zombie. <laughs> There's the main queue line. So up the steps we go. Let's head inside the building. Obviously this was a there was a major refurbishment, well the biggest refurbishment in a long time that took place uh, not too long ago. So what happened is they completely switched the queue line. Completely switched it, so you now go around here. So it's a bit less wonky. There's a bit of a zigzaggy zaggy queue line that went straight through there while I'm filming now. So literally before you just went straight through it. Now you go around it and all the things on the other side. So obviously beautiful theming in there. Got these picture frames here. Just as well. So the theming of the animatronics always been a good one. Eyes are watching. Let's get inside, Jewel. I swear it moved. So, we have just done Jewel the Haunted House Strikes Back. Just seeing this, now I thought I'd turn you guys around. So, I see this. Look at that, the Haunted House 1992, age 30. 30 years old, so I thought, whoever's put that there, that's a nice little touch from Alton Towers there. Fantastic stuff. So yeah, that's a nice touch. Now, obviously with Jewel, um, do I think there's been any visible improvements in there in terms of effects and lighting, etc.? Not really. A couple of moments where I think they were missing something, an animatronic or something. Maybe Jewel is next up to get a re upgrade. Maybe after Nemesis, Jewel will be up for, for an upgrade. Um, who knows? I, 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 me personally, I reckon it, it probably will be. Um, mind you, it wasn't too long that they did some work to it, so they might want to wait for a few years before they uh, do some work to it, but I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, Jewel, not much visible change to Jewel. Still all right. Like I said, there's still things not working, the tunnel's still not working, which I don't think they're going to turn it anymore. Yeah, could have been better, but it was alright. I got 16,000, first time I crossed the 10,000 mark, so let's go to our final ride now, which is going to be Wicker Man. Feed the flames. <laughs> Towers Resort. 90 minute way, so definitely the last ride of the day. Definitely not going to get anything else today. Oblivion, don't mind giving that a miss to be honest. 13, again, don't mind too much. 
gangster Grammy. I would have liked to have got on that again, see if we get a full run through without breaking down like the first year, last year, but uh, oh well. I want to try and come back to Horton Towers more times this year, so fingers crossed, try and get gangster Granny another time this year. Nothing's confirmed yet about future visits, but definitely looking at Scarefest this year. So, fingers crossed it all goes through. Themed bin. So yeah, let's get inside Wicker Man. The last ride of the day. Danger, do not enter. Wicker Man here in the Mutiny Bay section. Uh, you might have noticed in the background as well there's new music in Mutiny Bay, which by the way, side note, love it. Uh, Wicker Man, number one coaster for a reason at Alton Towers. Number one coaster at Alton Towers, number one coaster at Icon of Apple Pledge Beach, but number one coaster at Alton Towers, definitely Wicker Man. Um, it's got a lot more aggressive since last season, I think it throws you about a lot. Uh, the speed of it has definitely increased, I think it definitely feels uh, quite rattly, but a good rattle sensation, which is a great thing to have for a wooden coaster. Uh, GCI have done a really good job with it, I think the parking has done really well maintaining it. The pre-show, the pre-show. Now, I've got to say, there's, there is changes to that pre-show, there is um, new sort of light up signs around the bottom, around the side. You've got an actor in the middle that does that and sort of lets you in. Um, you've got, I guess, new smell pods. I could definitely smell some different scents compared to last time we did the pre-show a few years back. So I think overall, good change to Wicker Man and it's already a great ride. Let's head to Towers Trading and review the end of this trip. Love the music. One little thing I wanted to catch before the end was the new entrance portal for CBB's Land. Look at that new theme in down there, new flooring. Always good to see. Got a bit of a bit of a new entrance way going in there, so good to see new changes to see movies land. Didn't have time to get into review the three new rides today, but save that for another visit this season. 
so that is the end of our day here at the Alton Towers Resort. We did some fantastic rides today. Wickerman was great. Rita was definitely improved. Galactica's definitely improved. Smile has improved. Uh, Jewel, not so much, but uh, overall a very good day indeed. Now, if you do want to see more content uh, from the Alton Towers Resort, I'll hopefully bring some more out as soon as possible uh, across the season. Uh, make sure you do like, comment, subscribe. My name is Coach Chow. Keep living the coast life. I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have a towers day.